Hello everyone, this is Balance Four Sevens, and today I want to talk about your heritage and where you might have come from, or at least get some history on the immediate family. I started doing my research back in, I want to say, the mid to late 90s. I actually was registered on Ancestry.com well before it became popular. Um, I remember when it started becoming popular. And I was like, finally, they discovered this really neat website that people can go on and really get some informative information. They do some research for you and try to get you some information that may be relevant to your relatives. It's very accurate for the most part, I will say that. But the only problem I was running into is that I had I couldn't retrieve any like photos, actually. Um, like I said, I'm the youngest of eight and I wanted to do the history because we have a lot of complexions in our family very questionable complexions but when I was very young my grandmother lived with us who is African American she was married I want to say Caucasian but I remember him stating that he wasn't Caucasian he said not to call him that and we had to respect it and not call him that but looking at him there was nothing he had no color at all. He wasn't albino. He didn't he didn't even carry a black man's feature. He just didn't do these things. He just he looked all Caucasian and you know, we tried to respect it, but we, we still always said that he was white. And if you look at his kids with my grandmother, they you can see the distinction, you can see the difference. Their complexions and their hair textures and their mouths, they're very small. Small mouth, very, you know, just their complexions are very, very fair. Really pretty, long, curly, natural hair. They didn't, they couldn't even perm it. It was too, too curly. You couldn't do nothing with it, actually. I used to admire that kind of hair until I saw you couldn't do nothing with it. But as I gotten older, my hair is starting to transform over to that side. And I'm a little confused because I can't do this kind of hair. I really can't. So as you can see, I got my natural hair out and, uh, yeah. <laughs> I always had thick, really full hair and very manageable. I could, you know, I could rock any hairstyle when I was younger. But now as I gotten older, it's, it's definitely the texture has changed. And I'm, that I wasn't warned of. Let me enlighten you. I wasn't warned of that. But, you know, you kind of go with the flow. But, anywho, when I was doing my research, I found out that he... I, I remember when he passed away. Let's go there. I remember when he passed away. I was like, oh, about seven, six seven years old, something like that. I was quite young, but I do remember him. And he used to live around the corner from us. They are from North Carolina. They met them. They had their children. Where they actually are from, I'm not very sure, but I think they were born in the Carolinas because when I retrieved their death certificates and their birth certificates, which I was able to do during my transition, I really did a lot of my own research before I even knew that Ancestry.com would even get that deep into it, but I did my own. I went to the the record company and um, retrieved their information. They, you know, they asked you a few questions just to make sure you legit. And I honestly knew the answers, which was really shocking. But I was able to retrieve all those things, and they were born in the 1800s, which is really, really, yeah. They really go way, way, way back there. Keep in mind, my grandfather might have died when he was. I want to say mid to late 80s, and this was in 1976 or 77, something like that. It was, it was, for, it was back, no, no, I'm sorry, no, 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 no. He had to have died like 70, I want to say five or maybe even four, because I was young. I wasn't 10 years old. I was very, very young when he passed away. And I remember them burying him, burying him in a military cemetery. All the tombstones are exactly the same. I mean, it was like hills and hills of these tombstones. That was very... I'd never been in a military um, cemetery until... It, that was the first and the last, honestly. And I remember the flag they folded and gave to this significant other. They didn't give it to my grandmother. 
they weren't together anymore. So I guess the, the woman that he was with, you know, was entitled to the flag, I guess. I don't know how that goes. But um, I do remember that. And um, as I was doing my history on him, like I said, he served in World War One, And um, they had him down as Negro. They did. But if you saw him, he wasn't Negro at all. I didn't, maybe because he did deal with Negroes, so to speak. And so he was labeled as one. And um, But I retrieved his birth certificate. And it was so old that it was very limited on information that they had on it. They had his birth date and they had his mother's name. Her name was Martha. But she didn't have a last name. They didn't have a father name on it. It was crazy. I was like, wow. You know, even though they had record of it, it wasn't very detailed record. You really couldn't get a lot from it. I don't even know if they even had his race on there. I, I don't recall, but I know in them days, I'm sure, oh, they labeled you. <laughs> they definitely going to label you as, if you Negro, you Negro. And that's what they put. Where I saw Negro was the Ancestry.com, you get a leaf, and they want to know... Is this the person that you are seeking? Is this the accurate information if you know it? And that's why it's really good to do your own history prior to them even getting it to you because you can accept this as history and it may not be accurate. So they pulled up the census. They pulled up their census when he was with my grandmother. And when he was with my grandmother, they had all five of my aunt and uncles and under their name they didn't have i want to say i don't recall seeing the two oldest ones they were older and i think they were already moved away and married and things like that so the younger ones were with them my mom was two years old that's when i knew that was you know i, I remember all my aunts i know all their names I all i knew all their real names I knew my uncles, and all their names was underneath their name. It was amazing. And they, they had actually found their real census back then in 19... My mother was born in 28. So this was the 1930s um, Census Bureau report. And, you know, it had their, their... My mother was only two years old. She was only two. So, I mean, my Uncle Albert... I mean, I'm sorry, my Uncle um, Bob was only a year old. So, because he was like a year under my mother. So, <laughs> my mother was next to the the youngest. She wasn't quite the youngest. She was the youngest girl. So, I definitely did the research on that. And I tried to find out why my grandfather looked like he was white. Like a pure white man. I know light skin when I, know, I see it. Even some of them can fool you. You know, you're like, what? You know, you kind of question their nationality sometimes. But... Now he was he was pure white. He was just there was nothing nothing to indicate he had color in him at all. So I thought he kept saying he was an Indian. He never he would say he's not Caucasian. So I I did some research and he came from the Cherokee. My mother always said they were Cherokee. So I did the research down in the Carolinas and come to find out that they are a different color. Indians. You have white Indians. You have Caucasian Indians. You have brown Indians and red Indians. And they come from different tribes. And he came from the Cherokee tribe. And that was why he looked white. Which is really odd. And I guess as Indians back then, in those days, they didn't label you as Indian. Like, you know how now everything is like African American, Indian American, Latino American. They didn't do that. They kind of put you in a colored category. So if you had any other culture outside of Caucasian, you were, sometimes you were considered Negro. Unless you were just blatantly, like, not Negro. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, of course he was around, you know, blacks and things of that nature. And he met my grandma. I don't know how they met. I don't know the story behind that. Um, they weren't, like I said, they weren't together when I was very young. And they died when I was quite young. So they was already well separated. They were separated when, when they sent my mom down here. They sent my mom... And her siblings, some of them, they sent three. They sent my mom, one of her sisters, and the youngest brother down here to live with the oldest sister who was already down here in Maryland. They were grown. So she sent them down ahead of her because her father, them, them two was having some kind of marital issues. And um, she, she wanted to get rid of the, the youngest first, and she sent them down. And I don't know how old they were when she eventually came down herself because when she came down, I was born. 
you know, well, not came down, but I will say when she was living with us when I was young. So how long she had been with my mother, I really, really don't know. I don't know the story behind that. But shortly after, my grandfather moved to Maryland. <laughs> so they all came to Maryland, everybody, except two. Two sisters stayed in the Carolinas. And to this day, I, they might be passed away. I, I think they have. I'm not sure. I really don't want to say it if they haven't. But they may be living and they may be dead. But they were the only two that stayed down the Carolinas. Because when we went to visit, me and my mom, we would go visit them. Which was pretty cool. I mean, when I look back now, when I was younger, I was like, oh, it is so damn boring down here. I cannot do this. But, you know, when I look back now, yeah, sure. It was it was pretty cool to go down there and visit people from another state. So, yeah, absolutely. But I just, like I said, I, I wanted to do the history. And I've always, because we come from such a big family. It's a lot of us. And this tree and this family is getting bigger and bigger. I mean, I'm actually, for the first time, I can admit I'm almost losing count. Of how many people it is now. It's really like when my mother passed away, I did the obituary and my mom, you know, eight kids. It was like 37 or 38 grandkids. Great grand was exceeding in almost the 70s. It was like unreal. And so many kids have been born since then. This was back in 2010. So yeah, it's a lot of us. It's a lot. And I, I'm just trying to be mindful of everybody. I don't want to forget anyone, which it was it's not easy because I'm losing count. And then when I find out so and so done had a child, I'm like, okay. And some of them I don't even know all their names anymore. It's like, you know, you know how people get older, they move on, they get on with their lives and do whatever. And you lose you lose sight of that. It's like, you know, and then maybe they get together, maybe doing a funeral or doing a wedding or they just happen to come in town or just I ain't going to say come in town, technically, because mostly all my peoples is right there in Maryland. All of them. Most did not leave. Most. It's only a few of us, a handful of us, really left. Some of them came back. I wasn't coming back. It wasn't going to happen, so it was what it was. I, I, I enjoyed Maryland. I did. I, that's my place. I still go back there every day to work and visit family members when needed or whatever and want it. But for the most part... I don't want to live back there anymore. I just wanted a change of scenery. But I don't want to read too far off the subject. Like I said, I really, really did a lot of research. And it's not easy. I'm telling you, but if you really want to know where a lot of that stems from, yeah, absolutely. I realize it skips generations some. And some, it, it stays right in that that same generation. And, it, you know, the look is what I'm implying, you know, um the fairness, it's a lot of that in my family, but it's a lot of, you know, just beautiful, like, rainbows of colors throughout my family, it's like, so many of them, it's, it's crazy, but it was just so interesting to see, you know, that, that they were different types of Indians like that, and I'm not talking about, like, the West Indies, I'm not talking about those kind of Indians, I'm talking about the ones that migrated down there in the South, and, became part of the black culture and that's how a lot of them actually got together and you got creole because everybody thought my mom was creole and you know we always just claim african-american we black people <laughs> you know we that's what we do you know we're not gonna be ashamed of that you know we grew up you know in those kind of neighborhoods that's what we know you know but i i definitely did the search and my family was always curious of that and they always like is he white is he white did you find out the truth was he white and he was white Indian. That's what he was. I did find that out. And it's so important that you guys get to know your family. I still do research um, when I feel like it. I'm not as heavily into it as I used to be. But I will tell you this. It's also important to get your DNA. Find out, you know, those things that runs in your family. I, that's so important. You want to know where you get mental disorders from and where maybe high blood pressure is coming from and I don't think it's just a black thing. I cannot stand when they put they just label us as number one of everything and it's sad and it may have some facts but I don't think it's all true. I really don't. I just think it's a way we kept in a box. You know, it's a way of like kind of you know making us feel like we're very different from the rest and from what rest is what I want to know it was we all part of the human race I don't get that part but um 
it's important that you know your history. Uh, you don't want to end up in a situation where there's a lot of really negative heritage, heritage things coming through. Like, you know, a lot of cancers running through your family. Not, I'm not saying you're not, you don't want to end up because, I mean, you can't help where you're born at. This is true, but it's real important because once you get the information accurately, you can do preventive maintenance from that point on. You can get, in, get into things and find out, okay, this runs in my family. I need for you to do this. You know what I'm saying? So, it's just really important to to know these things and understand these things. I apologize for the lights reflecting in my glasses. I have a studio set up in the back, so you can see glasses, you know, light reflecting off my glasses a lot. And I can see it as I'm looking into the camera, so. But it's all good. I mean, I need the light. But anywho... What is some of your heritage? Did you look and find out where you're really from? Some people think they're one nationality, and they totally are not. So it's really important. I'm telling you, in Ancestry.com, I'm not an endorsement of them, but I definitely, I would promote them big time because they really do work. And I have, like, I've been using them for years, literally. I can say a good, whew, 20 years? 20 years I've been doing my research on my family. I, you would think, you know, I would have it down packed by now, but I just, it's been off and on. Whenever I feel like doing it, I'll do it. But when I don't, I won't. It's just not going to happen. But um, I like to see where it all comes from. As a matter of fact, I still have the tree. It's still on Ancestry.com. And I can still go on there and actually see new leaves. Things that are linked, and I love it because the more and more family members that I link on, they get leaves, and then you find out some things about them you did not know. Um, they'll pull up your census record. I remember when the census was around. I don't think they do that anymore. They might. I think it's too much technology now. You don't have to do it. They're going to link you anyway because if you ever notice, if you go on the white pages on uh, Google, whatever, you can go on there and you can do the white pages. And, and if you're looking for someone, for instance, pull yourself up just to see, especially if you've done anything online with your personal information, they know who you are. And when they do, they link you to your family members. They, they will be like possibly related to, and they'll have like all your siblings. <laughs> it's amazing what they know so you really don't have to do the census anymore but the census really helps us now to find out our heritage it's really good that they did that and you know because the census kind of carried on it'll tell you all about war records um all sorts of things the census can incorporate they'll tell you the neighborhoods they lived in what was the lifestyle they were living um it's, it's a lot involved with that part. But, like I said, my biggest problem I ran into, there were no pictures. So, what I did on Ancestry.com was I incorporated pictures. So, when years from now, and even now, if the family wants to look it up under our tree, they'll see pictures attached. And they'll see who's who. And they'll be like, wow, I know so-and-so. So, I think that's really exciting, exciting when you see the actual pictures. I wish, um, I thought or hoped for with my grandfather since I did most of the background because it actually ex it came from him, basically. I felt like him being in the military, it would have, they would have had some sort of picture. Now, I don't, like I said, he was born in the 1800s, but he, in the 19th, you know, in the 20th century, he actually, you know, was young enough. To, it seemed like they would have had pictures. I'm not sure, especially a military. I really don't know why. Maybe they are there, and I just haven't received them, and they haven't retrieved them yet. Um, I There are certain things you do have to pay for. I know the DNA you will have to pay for. I did not do the DNA, but, you know, when, when time comes and it feels right, I'm going to do the DNA because I really, really want to know you know, what's in our bloodline, you know, how far back this goes, you know, Will it take us to Africa? Will it take us somewhere else? Will it take us straight here on this very land since he was Indian and they were here first? So it's really, really very interesting to understand and know all that knowledge about yourself. And, and something to be proud of. It really is. I, I think so. I don't think none of us would be disappointed if we did a DNA. I think we'd be more proud because then you'll find out who, where your heritage is, where it all came from, and where all a lot of this stemmed from. And then they may even give you some serious history. 
Ancestry.com has had, I don't know if it's still running on cable, but they actually had, you know, where the celebrities are on there and they do this DNA and they find out they're from these other people from all across the world and what these people actually did. And that, that I think that's more interesting. You know, there were some that found out that their, you know, ancestors were slave masters and everything. And it was like, they was upset. They was like, oh my gosh. But I mean, with Caucasians, you can't help but to know that somewhere down that bloodline, they were some slave masters. So there's no need in getting upset about it. And just like with us, we know in the in the bloodline they were slaves. So you can and and, and, and we have we have two types of bloodline. We have, we probably that's why I want to do the DNA because we probably have way more than just those two bloodlines, African Americans and Indian Americans. We probably have way way more. It's, you probably be surprised what's in the bloodline. And I really it's I think it's very interesting to do if you the type of person that's heavily into your family and just to see where where it's all at and where it all came from. And that right there, I guess it'll tell you where you're going. I you know but it would be interesting to know why we all have like repetitive behaviors like almost not I'm not going to say exact but it's some similarities from back then till now I, I do believe and it'd be nice to know where it all really came from like to find out like I said the mental thing with me is, is interesting and that's just becoming more curious to me because I realized with me I passed it on so I'm like well where did I get it from you know where did this self-esteem thing come from you know what I'm saying I I don't always believe it comes from a place sometimes not necessarily comes from a place I don't always believe that it was genetic I believe sometimes something could happen to you and it starts that bloodline it doesn't have to necessarily come from someone but it would be interesting just to see was it genetically passed down to me you know I'm willing to do the research on that where would I start like I said I believe it would have to be the the DNA test it would have to start there I have to see where my bloodline came from and you know where the oppression came from and why some of us are more sensitive and some of us are very very loud and and just you know just don't give a damn you know and it's a lot of that and I realize it's almost like half and half it's one side of the family don't give a goddamn, and then the other half is like, I don't, what, what you say, you know, like, I know you didn't say that, and then you hurt their feelings, it's like, it's like totally opposites, I'm split, you know, I'm the type of person, you know, you push me too far, like I said, I'm gonna come out, and then, then, then you see that other side of the family that, that's there, but then I'm only, I'm more suppressed, I'm like more, like, humble and passive and let things happen and then when it happens and, and it gets too far gone I get really really upset so yeah I'm that's me I'm split I'm split down half and half and that's the way I feel like I'm half and half you know like where where does that come from because when I look at my mom she wasn't nothing like that but she was you know she was a disciplinary she was the type of person that um you didn't get smart with you didn't you didn't cross out she just she just had that presence about it she just was that woman you know, that you just respect it. And she never got loud. She never really cursed. She never did any of those things. It was like, mm hmm okay. You might not want to do that. You know, that was, that was, that was that's how she is. And we respected that. But my sister, off the charts, <laughs> still to this day. I'm like, where do you, even my mother used to say it. Where do you come from, child? Did I even have you? But, you know, my sister would say, like, when I was born, that I was a change of life baby because my mother had me later on. So I didn't get that part of mama, you know, something like that. I didn't get that. So it must have been a side of mama that I never saw ever. So I'm thinking if she was anything like my sister, that's where my sister gets it from. So then I'm thinking, well, where did y'all get it from? You know? So it's really, really good to know where that bloodline is coming from because it's, it's crazy. Because I believe they would be like that under any circumstances. I don't believe... Whether your poverty level or your middle class or you're rich, I believe they would still be like that. So it's something in the bloodline. It has nothing to do with being a product of the environment. I really don't believe that. No, I think you can become a product of your environment. And what I mean by a product, my definition is it is that you limit yourself in your environment. You know, you don't know nothing outside of that. So whatever is there, you be you start to become. 
that's what I believe is a product. Not so much as, you know, it's just in you and you're just... And then there's some people that's in the environment and don't become a product because their idea of it is like, it's be, their thoughts are way beyond where they are. You're very limited when you allow yourself to be limited. And that's where you become a product. It's actually a mind thing. It really is. You know, I was a tight person. Always wanted to get out of the hood. I never... I never was like, oh, I want to live here forever. It's fun or whatever. It had its moments where it was fun. It had its moments where it was tragic. And I just didn't want to be a part. When it became really tragic and it took a turn, I was ready to go. I was done. I was done with the place. I was like, especially when I had a child. I was like, oh, I don't want my kids to see this. I don't want them to be exposed to this lifestyle. It just, it's not, this is not where it's at. I don't want them to see death. I want them to see life. I want them to see the light. The brightness, the, the the fun, the enjoyment of what family is all about. Not, you know, losing friends and family members to tragic. It's just, it was too much. And I, did, I just didn't like it. So, as a result of that, I really, really got out of the hood. And I tried to stay out of the hood. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I go back in. But, I mean, it is what it is. I have family day. I have friends. Still in the hood, never left. <laughs> I had a girlfriend say that not recently. She was like, Kim, I'm the only one left. Only one stayed back here. You know, maybe I should leave. You know, I should you know, she thought about it, you know. But me, I've always had that dream. Even when I was in the hood when I was young. I'm not gonna this is not where I wanna grow. I'm not gonna you know how you, you picture your apartment, your first apartment. I never pictured it in the neighborhoods in which I lived in. Never. I used to cut out pictures and magazines and put these really nice sets together like living room sets and things like that and I would paste it and just envision what I wanted my place to look like and it actually did come to pass I really I will say that so visionary boards do work even though I didn't realize that's what I was doing it was just something that I enjoyed doing and I was like I want this only thing I'm gonna be honest I didn't get yet and it's still yet to come I always wanted to have a drop floor in my living room you know where you step down into the living room something real nice and I never got that but believe me I, I still feel like it's going to come and when it comes I think that's going to be my retirement home that's going to be it that's, I'm done you know I've gotten a lot of things that way but and sometimes you are what you speak you are you become what you say you want to become in a lot of ways. I, I've limited myself in thoughts. I've done these kind of things. But once again, I would like to know where that came from. Where that it feels like sometimes I hit a wall. Where, where did all that come from? I mean, for no reason, it felt like I hit a wall. And I don't get that. So I'm just curious as to, is that genetic? Is it some type of limitation mentally that I just developed on my own? Or did it just, was it inherited whether it's inherited or I did it for myself I believe it can be broken and um I do believe that I really do I just think it takes work because you're so used to it it's something you became trained to and it, you do it even without even now acknowledging that you're doing it it's just something that comes up and the moment you hit a wall like boom guess what you feel limited like man here we go again I don't know if I can get around that. So I, I I try to think my way through it, around it, up it, below it, and sometimes I can't. And that's where they they like, that's where you don't have faith. And it's a lot of questionable things out there, but I'm working on it. I'm really, really am working on it because I want to know. But that's like a little tidbit on my family background and just to see where it all came from. I did not do the research on my grandmother. And that will be my next task, just to see where all, where it all came from, I, how they met. I mean, I never get that story. All the ones that significantly may have known that are gone now. So um, it's real important. Also, when you want to do this kind of thing, you know, if you got elderly people in your family, get as much information as you possibly can from them because they're very knowledgeable. They know a lot of stuff. <clears throat> write it down. I did get a lot of information. I really did. I will say that because I still got family members reaching out to me about, I heard you did the background. What did you find out? And this and that and the third. But it's real important to get the ones who knew who were there before you and the stuff that they know, especially while if, you know, that they're, you know, very memorable of it. So it's important to get it. My mom used to tell me stories all the time. 
I can tell you a million one story, so yeah. But get to know who you are and see where it all came from. I think you'd be very surprised and very happy of your outcome once you find out. This is Balance for Sevens. Let me know.